All right. Ted, I want to start with this is probably the most important um, first place for us to start with. And then we're going to get into what we were talking about in the intro is how did you at such a young age, because we, we talk about this so much on the program is parsing for signal and inspiring young kids, especially to parse for signal related to not only what are the most uh, ancient spiritual understandings of metaphysics and the nature of reality, but also around what are the most cutting edge sciences and then bringing those two together and, and also the kids unique gift and identifying that you at such a young age were able to figure out how to get, how to, how to parse for that signal and became and achieved all of your medical successes so much earlier than most people do. How did you figure all of that out? How did you begin parsing for that signal at such a young age? Actually, um, and I have said this before, and I, I insist on it, uh, especially on children, it's not to stifle their curiosity. You push your kids and younger people to be curious about things. And for the parents, not to be to provide pat answers to things like God made this and God made that and suddenly you know the child becomes lazy what I call intellectual sloth that plagues our society right you, you allow them to discover you allow them to get bored and they watch a cutter a caterpillar and then they wonder what happens to a caterpillar you know it, when you when you couple that with the proper guidance and you know, a certain industriousness on the part of the parents or on the teachers to nurture the curiosity with the proper facts, right? Then you could actually instill in, in, in a child that there are certain patterns that nature follows. Yes. Right? And, then they, when, and then when they realize that the nature follows um, certain patterns, um, then they could realize that, okay, then there is such a thing called mathematics that is the science of abstract pattern, right? You could see that they could, you could abstract, for example, x plus x equals 2x, then one apple plus one apple equals two apples, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and, but then when it's uh, y, it's, uh, you know, x plus y is so a one apple plus one orange equals one apple and one orange. Then you could immediately see that uh, the pattern can be immediately abstractable. And then you, you instill the, in them a, a love for abstract patterns. And uh, that, that, will, that will spur them into, you know, more curiosity about, well, what other patterns exist. And pretty soon, you know, for mathematical purists out there, for example, they really love the beauty of uh, being able to abstract those patterns and they make these discoveries that way. But for us who are, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, undergrad in biology, right? And and uh, for me, it's uh, looking at the uh, what fascinates me and what drives my curiosity. Always, uh, even as a younger child, is how did we evolve? You know, how did we come to be this way? What were the factors that were there? That's why, for example, an interest in evolutionary biology is, uh, you know, I, I, you know, it should be taught to everyone. You know, um, uh, yeah. evolutionary biology should, should be taught to every, uh, 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 every, everyone because it shows you how we evolved. How did we get here, right? And then as you mature, you should be taught uh, the new field now. There's a uh, new field called evolutionary psychology, right? Yes. Why, do we, we, why do we behave the way we do? Yes. And uh, when you see that, that's uh, shaped by evolution and it's also... And, and uh, evolution is shaped the way the brain is wired, the way we're wired, right? And then, um, and then for us to be understanding the economic, uh, economics where we're in, everyone should be taught, you know, uh, game theory, evolutionary game theory. You know, these yeah. are things are fundamental, but you could yeah. see what I'm driving at, right? Yes, yes. One is the capacity to see patterns. What's the definition of genius, right? Yes. Uh, is... is uh, the capacity to see patterns where others say that there are none and the patterns exist, right? And the definition of madness is the capacity to see patterns where others say that there are none and there are really none, right? <laughs> so so there is that thin line. Uh, yes. But, um, and even if you take a look at IQ tests and all of that kind of stuff, you know, it's really your capacity to, to uh, see patterns and to do abstractions with those patterns yes. and those, the clearer you see them you know uh, the faster the faster you are at looking so 
um, I have this concept, Alan, of what I call, I like verbizing nouns. So, uh -huh. <laughs> and I, I, I love fractal mathematics, right? So, yes. um, um, you know, I look at the core pattern, you know, what gets iterated over and over, what gets repeated over and over, right? So for evolution, it's really very simple. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, it's, it's a random variation and natural selection, right? And that's Darwin's version. But now we have already abstracted that. Right, so we have we have essentially random variation and you know um, uh, environmental selection, but the unit of selection now differs, right? So for Richard Dawkins, for example, you could see that his unit of selection is a gene, is the gene that's being selected for. Yeah. For Darwin, it was populations, right? And um, I was uh, hearing uh, an evolutionary biologist from Harvard actually interpreting this all wrong. You know, uh, that the, the unit of selection in Darwin's case is not the individual, it's the population that's being selected for, right? It's, it's kind of like pre-industrial England, right? Uh, when when and there were lots of white moths and then suddenly with the industrialization, there, were, there was a lot of soot around. Right, and suddenly the black moths started to getting selected for because they could conceal better, and the white moths started getting eaten by the pigeons because they could be seen. Um, they could be seen, right? So you could see very easily that uh, these are the kinds of things that um, that uh, 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 selection does. But the unit of selection is different. For memes, which was introduced by um, yeah. by uh, uh, Dawkins, right? Yeah. Um, not the bastardized internet meme that we have now, but it's yeah. the unit of selection for society and culture, right? When you are going to school, they, what they're doing is they're transferring memes, right? And memes are yeah. be behaving like genes. They're like viruses. They totally. transfer, yeah. right? And these are, these are like, you know, um, sayings, uh, like, like maxims, like, uh, you know, the early bird catches the worm, right? Yeah. And yeah. I like to bastardize that a lot. I say the early bird catches the early worm. Because you could see how these little memes would affect your behavior, right? Yeah. So, um, so you could see that it all stems from early on, uh, pushing, uh, pushing the curiosity, um, allowing for uh, the child to identify, you know, that there are certain core patterns there that get repeated. Exactly. Even if it's hidden, right? Yes. And then an abstraction of that pattern to something else that's manipulable, right? Yes, so, yes. So now you could see a child growing to manipulate, you know, a, a, math, a geometry of 64 dimensions, you know, which you could never imagine, right? It's <clears throat> because introspection is usually all wrong, right? <laughs> you, because you cannot imagine a, a geometry of uh, something that has uh, 64 dimensions. But, uh, you know, sure, there, there are, there are uh, geometries now that are occurring beyond space and time. So you know, um, if you, for example, it occurs to them that, hey, you know, I can regard space and time as an illusion and physics is finding now that space time is an illusion. So you could see the ramifications of that are very vast. And we need ki these kinds of motivations for the younger people, not just to fucking survive and reproduce. Yeah. I mean, because that, that's ordinary. Right? Yeah, that's so, so ordinary. That's ordinary. Yeah, that says this. We do we, this within two standard deviations. As as as, as yeah. I like to say, you know, if that's what we do, and then we we destroy this earth, right? And then so we go in spaceships and colonize another livable planet, survive and reproduce, wreck that planet again, and go somewhere else. I was like, oh, you know, then we're not doing our job, right? We're, we're not doing a job in in determining where we want to bring our species to. And yeah. I, I presume that this is the reason why you want to bring out podcasts like this is that, you know, how can we have a species awareness that brings us forward to where we really want to bring ourselves to in relation to the network of other species that are out there in this planet? If it's our one and only host at the moment, right? And we're destroying it at a really alarming rate, you know? So, uh, and, and then from and then from and then from there is, and then you you go back like uh, oh you know the the reason where those so many climate change deniers and all that is is you know I, I usually don't like to say this is it's just plain ignorance right it, it, there's a certain as Dawkins uh, likes to say you know there's a certain 
form of intellectual courage, right? Yeah. In able to be able to do this, uh, to make these kinds of assertions. Yeah. And, and that intellectual courage, actually, uh, for example, if you're looking at climate change, you have to have a fundamental of, um, of uh, uh, the second law of thermodynamics, at least. But who wants to know that? Let alone want to know the, the structure of fermions and bosons and all and leptons and quarks. We evolved, right? We evolved to like to know stories because it's as, that's how we are evolved for survival, right? And for reproduction. So we like to tell stories around, you know, that's why we're good at conspiracies. We're good at all of these uh, uh, things that have plots and motivations, etc. But we're so poor at statistics. Like, for example, you know, the, the amount of car accidents are, are a lot more than taking a plane, for example. And we, we cannot realize that, right? Because we are made for a nomadic group of five to seven people. We're not intended to, to take a look at populations. <clears throat> You know, certain laws are, are, are formulated that way or regulations are formulated that way. The, the seatbelt law, you know, Massachusetts didn't want to do the seatbelt law because it crinkled their clothes, right? But uh, from a rational, uh, they were the last ones to enact it in law. But, uh, you know, from, 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 a, from a rational point of view means are you thinking statistically? And this is the effect, you know, from when you get child curious, and, and then, um, you know, superimposing science and, and, and mathematics, you know, and, uh, uh, and evolution, yeah. how we evolved yeah. and how we came to think this way, then there is a chance for us not to think this way, to think in a different way, right? Um, yes. And, and, and so we can, we can think of different solutions, right? Yes. For, uh, yes, yes. Uh, different solutions for issues and for, for the and that's why yes, for example yes, for, yes. i was thinking about health right I, you know we say we're talking about health optimization i know you've already gone far right like let, let, have... let, yeah let me hit let me hit the ball back and then we'll we'll keep, we'll keep, keep going this okay this this intro segment has been really awesome how, how you explained when the child is uh if has the full curiosity fully enabled and then also there is the guiding influence of of intelligent parents that have understood that there are these patterns that emerge and then by in a sense abstracting out those patterns into Pareto efficient ways of teaching the child about those patterns and also for the child to they themselves watch those patterns and for them to fully embody the recognition of those patterns, including the patterns of things like why there is perennial spirituality around the entire planet pointing at the same nature of reality understanding. So then there's this big synthesis that happens for the kid as they follow their creativity and they follow their curiosity and they're understanding the science patterns and the spiritual patterns and they understand their own unique artistry role. I really like that. And also I like just the classical bell curve understanding where in that center is just this idea of, okay, uh, have fun and reproduce. And then on like, on the, on the, on the non-progressive side is still notions of wanting to own other humans or violence or kill and then on the hyper progressive side these strokes of genius these kids that and and adults that maybe two or three standard deviations up the bell curve are usually the ones that like you said are able to abstractly reason these patterns in new creative ways in solving the greatest challenges that exist and in, in creating the greatest art and I, I like that a lot. Yeah. As, as long as as long as uh, the people within two standard deviations don't drown out, you know, those people. Yes. And it's very easy to drown out because as people who are wired for survival and reproduction, that's the even our symbolic manipulation is such, right? Yes. It's yeah. easier to memorize the characters in your telenovela than it is or in your daytime soap than it 
practice to memorize the family support and lessons, for yes, example. Yes, because yes. Because they have no story, yes. right? Yeah, and uh, that's so uh, well uh, said. So we need to tell oh. the story. We need to tell an exciting story that makes it even more fun to know about the families of elementary particles. And and, and beyond. Yeah. And, and beyond. Well, you know, and then, uh, you know, make them question it later. Are there really families of elementary particles? Is there, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, like, like uh, Donald Huffman in the case against reality in this uh, book, right? You know, is this really what it is? You know, uh, is what we're yeah. seeing what we're seeing or is it? Yeah, not? yeah. Uh, um, and that's curiosity, right? And that's curiosity. I, I like your your point is very right. That center of the of the bell curve. If if the idea that I've been pushing around a lot is that the people that are in a sense two or three standard deviations up the bell curve, their general um, purpose, in a sense, also is to uh, help the people that are in the um, in the in the maybe one standard deviation or to zero range up uh, the bell curve to, to help them do a, a pull up in a sense to, to go to the next level. So basically, you know, like Eric Weinstein has the idea of the portal, like the idea that you can create a portal to help people in that center part of the bell curve go through the portal through these stories and patterns that we can disseminate to them to inspire them to move up the bell curve. And let's just let's just jump into because we could spend we could spend so much of our time in just that in just that section. It's just the beginning. Um, okay, in general, just, just one go little, ahead. yes, yes, just one little thing. Uh, Sherrington in nineteen forty six or forty seven. You know, uh, he had a he had a, a lecture, uh, uh, Royal Royal uh, Society, where he said that you know the movement of society as regards you know its science, technology, culture, mathematics, etc in any one of those fields, say physics, right? Um, it's like an amoeba. Uh, uh, it, you, it throws off pseudopods or false feet, right? Uh, you know, it, it goes in one direction. And all you need is just a few of those geniuses pulling and pulling and pulling, you know, until pretty soon the entire body of society is yes. moved forward. That's right. right. So, and, 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 and that's, if that's what the best that we can hope to happen. Yes, right? yes. Uh, yes. And what we don't like happening is like several of these pseudopodia being thrown in different directions. You want a strong pull towards one so you could pull, you know, yeah. the 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 social cultural zeitgeist forward. Yes, yes, yes. You can yeah. pull the scientific zeitgeist forward. Yes, yes. Anyway. Yes, beautifully said. I love this first section. It was so powerful. Okay. <laughs> 